Brett is inching closer to the Caribbean, and we are also tracking two other waves behind it in the Atlantic. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas, and in this video, we are going to, of course, talk about Tropical Storm Brett that's a little stronger tonight than 24 hours ago from our last video. We're also going to break down the latest track from the National Hurricane Center and the potential impacts to the Caribbean islands, so stick around for that. And then closer to the end of the video, we're going to talk about Invest 93L. This could become our next tropical depression, but wait, there's more. Behind that system, a fresh, big, juicy tropical wave just rolled off of Africa. We're gonna take a look at that on satellite as well. There is the latest on Brett, a 65 mile per hour tropical storm as of the five o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. You see the flare up of thunderstorms just to the west of the center. A lot of the activity still lagging back to the east and northeast, indicating that it is still under the influence of some wind shear. It's helping to keep the intensity at bay a little bit, but still a strong tropical storm, 65 mile per hour sustained winds gusting to hurricane force at 75 miles an hour as it kind of works likely just tugging to the north of Barbados. You see it right there just above the E on the map. Latest track from the National Hurricane Center. Again, going to take Brett right on through the Lesser Antilles, really closing in on Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia by the time we get to Thursday night and into Friday morning. You see here as we close in on two o'clock into the afternoon on Thursday, getting close to Barbados, and then more towards the Lesser Antilles here as we get in towards late Thursday night and into early Friday morning. And then we see this weaken considerably, Brett does, as it kind of gets parallel with the Dominican Republic and Haiti, back to a 45 mile per hour tropical storm. And then there are indications that this thing might fall apart altogether by the time we get into early next week. Spaghetti models all still pretty much in agreement. There are always some crazy ones out there. We talked about this in the previous video that the hurricane warp there, that kind of pink one that works its way, that kind of flares up towards uh, Hispaniola and then towards the Turks and Caicos, same with the U.S. Navy model. Those two are outliers. We are likely going to see this continue to trend towards Central America it's going to be much, much weaker by the time it gets to Central America. It may not even be a tropical storm by that point. Latest tropical alerts here. We are looking at tropical storm watches here for Dominica in yellow for the darker blue color here. That's going to include Martinique and St. Lucia. And then for Barbados, we are under that tropical storm watch as well. It basically means that the watch means that tropical storm conditions are possible within 36 hours. Those need to be upgraded by the governments there, uh, different governments at play. And that's why we have some different watches and warnings in play. But tropical storm conditions here are going to be likely. Here's the deal. And I think this intensity timeline is really going to break it down for you guys watching, especially if you happen to be watching from the Caribbean islands here. It does appear that the worst of the storm is going to pass to the north of Barbados. You see that yellow shaded color here. This is the extent of tropical storm force winds and most of that staying off of the island. There's a stronger core of winds closer to the center pushing 60 miles an hour. And again, that certainly stays off of uh, the island of Barbados. Now, different story here for St. Lucia, for Martinique, and then for Dominica. You see it here. Tropical storm winds are going to be likely. That's going to be greater than 39 miles an hour for those islands. And then that core of the strongest wind could head towards the northern side of St. Lucia and then on the southern side of Martinique. So again, that core of that wind closer to 60, maybe gusting to 70 miles an hour is going to be possible. And then you see that little egg, as we call it there, shrink as it gets south of Puerto Rico. Again, Puerto Rico, we are not expecting any of those tropical storm force or tropical storm conditions. I want to show you a different perspective here, the model in terms of the wind. And you see the stronger winds ramp up in Barbados on Thursday morning through Thursday afternoon, still by 11 o'clock on Thursday, we have winds gusting to near 40 to 45 miles an hour in Barbados. You see it there towards St. Lucia, towards Martinique. We're going to see those wind gusts pushing 60, maybe 70 miles an hour. It's going to be a little breezy in Trinidad and Tobago. Nothing really concerning, though. This is going to stay well towards our north. And then as you head well further up uh, into the Leeward Islands, See St. John's, look at that, 30 to 40 mile per hour winds. Those are the gusts. It'll be a little breezy, but again, the worst of this storm is going to stay to your south. Here's the European forecast, again, showing you the time of the heavy rain. And this is really going to arrive for us in Barbados again Thursday afternoon. We're now fast forwarding to midnight, June 22nd into June 23rd. 
that heavy rain then starting to push towards uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines as well, even though we're not included in any watches and warnings. Also, as we get into St. Lucia, there's some of that heavy rain by 5 o'clock in the morning. On June 23rd, we still have some heavy rain towards Martinique, towards Dominica, into St. Lucia, and then into St. Vincent and the Grenadines as well before we start to see things wind down later in the day on Friday, June 23rd. I want to show you, uh, again, how much rain could be expected. It says wind gusts up top, but this is going to be the future rain here all the way through Friday into the afternoon. Again, we could have some flooding. The good news is, is that Brett is moving by at a pretty good speed, but we still could have some flooding. Note here through part of the Caribbean islands and into Barbados. I do think we have the opportunity for widespread three inches of rain. Could have isolated amounts up to six or seven inches. It's those amounts that we're going to be looking for for the potential for some flooding. So again, don't let your guard down in that realm too. So again, on a widespread scale here from Martinique into St. Vincent and the Grenadines, into St. Lucia, certainly into Dominica as well. We could end up anywhere from three inches of rain with the potential for 50 to 60 plus mile per hour winds here through the Caribbean islands. All right, mentioned about the next system potentially. Here it is. Here are these storms kind of lined up like ducks. There is Brett. Here is the next system, Invest 93L. X marks the spot there. It has an 80% shot to develop over the next seven days. And then here is that other big wave. There are indications that once it gets towards the central Atlantic, we could start to have things develop in that part of the world. Closer look at Invest 93L. Again, the second disturbance that we are tracking behind Brett, there is the L. Again, there's not much going for it. There's a little more thunderstorm activity around the center than what we looked at last night, but it still has a little bit of a ways to go here before it can be classified as a tropical depression. It needs to kind of get its act together. It needs to fire more storms around the center. Certainly the trailing wave behind it has some deeper convection, although it is not organized. I want to end this by showing you some of the computer forecasts with 93L. Again, what could become our next tropical depression, although the environment does get pretty ugly for that system, which is a good news for everybody involved once it gets out here. So it's not going to have much time to really consolidate and get real big and strong. So that's some good news. Most of the modeling with 93L does keep it away from the Caribbean. We're going to watch. There is Bermuda at the top of your screen. I'm pointing it out there. We could have a system kind of working towards Bermuda by the time we get into next week. So we're going to watch that for our friends in Bermuda. But by and large, most models keep 93L away from the Caribbean. There are a few, though, that take it towards the greater Antilles and towards the Leeward Islands. We're going to keep watching it closely. But again, I do think because of a weather system rolling off of the United States, it's going to have a tendency to kind of lift up and bend away from the U.S. But we're going to watch it closely for our friends in Bermuda. Hey, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you like tracking the weather, please consider subscribing as well. Also, I want you to check out this really, really cool video. I'm going to have it pop up here in a second. Take that. Out. It's going to talk all about climate anxiety. The Atlantic is really, really warm right now. Of course, it's helping to fuel this early kind of start to this active stretch of hurricane season as well. There's a video all about climate anxiety. You know, a lot of people are feeling it. So if you have a second, check that out. It's a really well done report as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.